So good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, setting aside time to attend the, today's symposium. Um, and I'm happy that you time. And we are sorry for the delay of about five minutes to start. And now we have both of our uh, panelists on board and uh, we have um, many more participants who have registered from multiple countries. And we believe they are going to join us uh, as we proceed. So as we have seen that today's symposium will be in the style of a plenary discussion. And we have two panelists with us. Uh, one of them is uh, Fadil Hezekia. Fadil Hezekia is a pharmacist and the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Tanzania. And he will have a, a more introduction on his side when he comes to give his insights as well. And the other panelist is Dr. Betty Maganda, who is a pharmacist, also graduated from the Muhimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences. She also has a master's degree in pharmaceutical management from the Bradford University in the UK, and a PhD in clinical pharmacology from Muhimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences, as well as the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Dr. Maganda has published a number of papers in peer-reviewed journal, and she's currently working closely with the uh, Medicine and Medical Devices Authority, as well as the Pharmacy Council of Tanzania in the areas of pharmacovigilance, as well as pharmacy practice. Currently, Dr. Maganda is a head of the Department of Pharmaceutics and Pharmacy Practice at the School of Pharmacy in Muhimbili University of West and Allied Sciences. Uh, the today's discussion is centered around the topic uh, of accredited uh, operations of accredited drug dispensing outlets in Tanzania. And we are going to uh, look upon the access and the availability of medicines and other issues. Also, we are going to highlight the challenges, opportunities, and the way forward with regard to this uh, uh, program of, of adults, which has been operating in Tanzania. Uh, just to highlight what is ADO for, for those of us who do not know particularly what it, it is, maybe, uh, I, I have tried to prepare a short summary for, for you about ADO so that we can get to understand it better. And my summary is based on the recent, on an analysis which was done by Dr. Brandon Russell on the Tanzanians uh, ADO program. Recent, uh, uh, or, and also some insight which have been obtained from the website of the Pharmacy Council of Tanzania. So ADO uh, is an acronym standing for accredited drug dispensing outlets and the program which was established in the year 2003 in Tanzania through the collaboration between the United States based nonprofit organization, which is called Management Sciences for Health, in short MSH, and the Tanzania Food and the Drug Authority at that time, FDA. The program was created in response to the 20, 2001 country assessment conducted by the MSH Strategies for Enhancing Access to Medicine, which is in short SIM program, uh, the Gates Foundation uh, funded group that fosters a uh, public private partnership in the developing world. Uh, during this assessment, it was revealed that uh, there are substantial gaps in both availability and the quality of the medicines, especially in the rural areas of Tanzania, which accounts for 75% of the Tanzanian population. And also the pharmacies are found to dis be distributed uh, widely in only in urban areas. And at that time, 60% of the pharmacies were in, located in Dar es Salaam. The largest city in Tanzania. So uh, people in the rural areas uh, access to medicine primarily through private retail shops. At that time, they were known as Duka Ladawa Baridi in, in, in Swahili, and which uh, the Duka Ladawa Baridis have been accredited or authorized by the TM TFDA to carry on small list, uh, only small list of prescription medicines. So by that time, uh, this Dukaladawa Baridi were not allowed to sell the prescription medicines at all. 
So the SIMS assessment revealed the spread of illegal dispensing of essential uh, prescription medicines, even though they were not allowed in the Dukaladawa Baridi, and many of which were also of poor quality due to the lack of oversight and unregulated channels of their distribution. In recognizing uh, these findings, rather than shutting down the Dukaladawa Baridis or remove the stocks from this medicine, the ADO program was adopted, which was focused on training the Dukaladawa Baridi improve to bring supplies and services in line with best practices so that the shops could then uh, be reclassified and they're authorized to dispense prescription medicines. And to conclude, following a pilot study in the Ruvuma region, the Thousand Party of Tanzania in 2003, the TFDA approved the program for a rollout to the whole country from the, between the year 2005 and 2006. And this was followed by the law, which was enacted to decertify and to remove or phase out all the Dukaladawa Baridis in Tanzania. So the ADO program was rolled out from the year 2005 until 2012, where it has been rolled out quite countrywide. And uh, then in 2013, it was handed over to the Farmers Council of Tanzania from the TFDA because of some legislation changes. According to the Farmers Council website, up to 2019, about 25,578 outlets or ADO shops had been registered. So uh, this is in a nutshell about the ADO program in Tanzania. And I believe we are uh, now more or less on board. So with that, I would like to, to welcome Fadili and Dr. Aganda to the discussion as well. So maybe you can give us a, a greeting or introduction note and Tell us what are your expectations for today's discussion. Welcome. You can start with Fazili, please. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, moderator. Uh, thank you for all the attendees for this particular forum. Thank you for having me in this uh, forum. My name, like has been introduced, uh, is Fazili Hezekiah. I'm a pharmacist uh, for over 13 years now, and I'm also a public health specialist, working as a, a privilege to, to, to be elected to be president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Tanzania. So my, my, my wish or the expected outcome of uh, the discussion in this uh, forum is for, for us to be objective, uh, and not be pushed by emotions, discuss and share experiences and evidences and maybe uh, views and opinions that will help us improve on the availability of medicines, uh, especially through the improvement of their operations and the conducts of the activities that are done in the uh, ADO, ADO shops. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fadim. Dr. Maganda, please. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Betty Maganda. As I've been introduced, uh, I'm a pharmacist working with the Muhimbili University as a lecturer and the head of the Department of Pharmaceutics and Pharmacy Practice. So as a pharmacist, uh, I'm sure uh, the symposium today, we're gonna give us a, a way forward, how we can improve the operation of ADO in the country, or otherwise uh, to ensure there is uh, improved access uh, to medicine of good quality and education. So this is what I'm hoping that we're gonna have a way forward, which could be done to improve the access of quality and medicine because this is one of the why ad was uh, in, established in Tanzania. Okay, thank you so much, Masota. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Maganda. 
uh, for the nice introduction as well. And uh, uh, as Fazil said, we try as much as possible to focus on the agenda and avoid emotions. And we use, um, just discuss the matter with facts so that at the end of the day, we can help the responsible stakeholders into improving the program or doing any other decisions which are relevant at this particular time. And everyone is free to contribute. You can do so by writing on the chat box so that I will read it for you, or you can raise your hand and switch on your microphone and uh, give your contribution or ask your question directly. We'll be happy if you introduce yourself, who are you and uh, where are you working, or where are you from, so that we can get to know yourself better. And uh, also, um, yes, if you are an expert or you are working, you have a particular experience with ADO, don't uh, hesitate to highlight it so that we can also know you and ask you follow-up questions if you would need to benefit from your expertise or knowledge in this uh, program as well. Uh, so as we know, ADO was uh, established with the four main objectives. One of them was to improve the quality of medicines which are being distributed. Another one was to increase the availability of medicines. And another one was to improve the quality of dispensing services. And the last one was to ensure affordability of the medicines uh, uh, in Tanzania. And uh, our, our today's discussion, because there is a lot of ways to discuss ADO, and it is a very broad topic. So we try to limit ourselves in a set of aspects so that we can uh, finish within the, the available time. So we try to, to, to understand ADO or to discuss ADO in terms of uh, how has it contributed uh, to the access and availability of medicines, uh, what are the quality of the dispensing services, and uh, we highlight also on the training programs which are generating the ADO dispensers, and finally on the regulation or oversight aspect of, of, of the ADO. So maybe to start with you, uh, Fadili, uh, what are your uh, what is your opinion on the contribution of ADO uh, towards the access and the availability of medicines in Tanzania since its establishment? Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. Uh... Uh, uh, Nelson, uh, to be uh, frank on the idea and the structure of the ADO program. Uh, so in the, in the ideal condition would, would say that the reasons and the thinking of the establishment of the ADO uh, was meant to help the access, uh, increase access to medicines, to people who are in the uh, hard to reach areas in the suburbs of the towns and the, in the rural areas. So for me, uh, to some extent, this may have been achieved. See, you see adults uh, being there in, in, in as much as their raw uh, quality and design, but they are there. Uh, we believe they serve people in those areas. But the issue that uh, is still questionable is on the, the objective of the ADO establishment, whether it uh, attained the, the quality of uh, the objective of the establishment of these, especially when it comes to the quality of services offered there and other factors that were put into consideration when initiating the program. But the program by itself, by all its uh, means of establishment, the idea uh, is, is, is the idea that will definitely, if done well, help uh, making sure that uh, people in the intended areas get the services they intend. So for me, I would say that yes, up to this point, some people have benefited but uh, not, I believe, to the level that we would have, we would want these uh, services and benefits to reach the people. Okay, thank you very much. And Dr. Maganda on your side? Um, 
I, I, I think uh, the objective of establishing Ardo in Tanzania was good because uh, they wanted to improve availability, uh, improve the quality, and uh, improve uh, access. I think that uh, the idea was good. And when you look on the objective, you look, it was a very good idea. Uh, but another issue is like uh, the program has faced a quiet number of challenges. The objective was really good, but there's a number of challenges which maybe uh, has made that uh, objective not to be met as it was supposed to be done. Uh, we are being served by unqualified uh, dispensers. The end of the objective was to remove all those uh, 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 untrained dispensers. We had to ensure that the standard settings of the premises, they meet a certain uh, standard, but when for current, when you go and see, you see that uh, there's some others which they don't meet even those standards. Uh, there was a continuation of business, but they, to ensure there's continuation of education and supervision, but you don't see any more those supervision to be conducted. So the objective was good because uh, it has improved the uh, accessibility to medicine especially in the rural areas where there's no pharmacies, because they wanted to ensure the adults are available in rural areas and the urban areas where there's no uh, pharmacies. So when you ask me, uh, the objective was really good. Maybe the implementation of the objective has been a, a problem. Maybe when we continue talking, maybe we'll come out with a way forward how we can ensure the objective of starting ADO uh, can be met. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes. uh, thank you for the highlights. And speaking of those uh, issues, uh, I have some studies here showing how ADO has performed with respect to uh, availability and access of medicines as, as, as example case studies. For example, John Chakla in 2015 showed that among antimicrobials purchased by members of the household, 32% uh, of them were, were being recommended by ADO dispensers. And uh, Chakra and the Martha in 2016 also showed that 48 to 49% of medications from different households were being purchased from ADO. And also Edmund Ruta in 2015 studying in Tanzania showed that 86% uh, of, uh, of, of, of households obtain their medicines from ADO shops. And uh, some findings are there also saying that most thought that adults are more convenient and they deliver high quality services and also they deliver high quality products. With respect to availability of antimicrobials in the adult shops themselves, the study done by John Chakra in 2015 also found that 63% of the trace antimicrobial uh, uh, agents were available in the adult shops which was compared to 60% available in the public health facilities. And 76% uh, of the households perceived that the medications are why, uh, if I go to the adult, it's a 76% chance that I get the medication which I, I want. Furthermore, people in rural Tanzania clearly think that adults is a part or are a part of the health of their healthcare system, and that one percent of the household members with acute illness thought care at an ADO. And uh, with this highlights, uh, coming back to you, Dr. Betty, uh, it looks like ADO has a significant contribution to the Tanzanian population with respect to uh, access to to healthcare as far as medications are concerned. What is your response to this? Yes, uh, as we said, uh, there is improved access uh, to medication. But again, we go back to the question, uh, do just access to medicine is just enough? Or we want to get an access to medicine and have all the necessary information? We want to get medicine from somebody maybe who is trained, who knows the principle of good dispensing practice, 
who can advise how to use the medication? Because as we know, if the medicine is not used properly, can lead to drug resistance. Maybe someone will not be treated. Yes, I can get an access to a certain drug, but um, maybe I'm not, I don't have that, uh, such kind of, of illness. Maybe I needed another one. So, uh, so that is an issue. The issue is not just an access. I think it was an access affordability, and improved quality services, and improved, uh, uh, I think, improved even treatment outcomes because we want to get the best out of what you are paying for because for in, in the other we are buying. So we want to have the best out of what we, we are buying. We want uh, to, to give, be given information. Mm. Okay, so it's not only about accessibility. Uh, so there is more than accessibility. So if we improve the other party, the training and other issues, I think this uh, other is a good idea, especially in rural and peri-urban areas where there's no access to medicine. So that's what I can say about. Thank you. Uh, just to remind the audience, you can uh, ask your question or give your contribution anytime as the discussion is proceeding. Just raise your hand or write your question or contribution in the uh, in the chat box, and I'll read it for you. Uh, coming back to you, Fadili. So according to uh, these findings here, I have highlighted, and according to Dr. Betty's contribution, do you think that the or do you agree that the ADO program has increased access of medicines to the civilian population, but in doing so also created other problems or challenges? Uh, thank you. Uh, I completely agree with uh, Dr. Betty. And uh, I, I am happy about the findings. The, the challenge I am seeing uh, on the on the on the uh, these findings or these uh, particular references, it's they are based more on the quantitative uh, representation of the data. So, like 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 Dr. Bibeti's comment and uh, observation, we are yet to do the qualitative analysis of the objectives of this program, and therefore, in that context, we need to not celebrate because we've seen challenges. Yes, we've, uh, we are now on the way to attaining the, the quantity uh, uh, of, of outlets because there are so many around uh, Tanzania, but the quality of the service that is being given there, that's uh, one of the challenge. Uh, for example, if I refer to a conclusion of one of the, uh, the uh, article that has been published in Crossmark, uh, it says that ADO uh, are the principal source of medicine in Tanzania and are an important part of multifaceted healthcare system. This is a quantitative. But when it comes to, to quality now, uh, the second part of this conclusion says poor prescribing in the health facilities, poor dispensing at the ADOs, and inappropriate patient demand continue to be uh, to, to, to contribute to a inappropriate use of medicines. And considering that now we have a large number of out, uh, ADO outlets compared to pharmacies. So you can see the challenge that we are having. We need to now move the efforts from quantity ADOs to quality ADO services. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much Fadili. Uh, for that uh, uh, very insightful contribution. Uh, and speaking of quality, uh, maybe we move straight forward because we have already spent some time on the issue of, of, of access and availability of medicines. And uh, uh, speaking of quality, actually uh, some other findings uh, from 2016 say that 90% of the medications uh, which were being dispensed in the ADO uh, shops were adequately labeled and they are well packed. And 61% uh, of the advice, which was uh, of the patients which visited or clients vi who visited the, the adults, received advice about nature of their illness. 
and 29% of the dispensers gave information on medication, yes, 29%, and 5% of dispensers gave information on the side effects. And 66% uh, of the clients were dissatisfied with the waiting times in the public health facilities, but they were very satisfied with uh, the waiting times when they go to the adult shops. And Rebecca Thompson in 2018 said that staff in the ADO had better knowledge of first line antimalarials than those in non ADO regions by that time. So are these representative, are these findings representative of the quality of healthcare services being offered in the ADO shops? Dr. Betty, please. There was a an issue with the internet here. So I didn't hear where was this study done and how many. Mm. Uh, we want to know that the study was done in the number of regions, how many regions. Mm. Maybe we can know if it was a representative. So where was the study done first? Because there was an issue with the internet in Inimoshi. So mm. there is up and down with the internet. Okay. Unfortunately, yes. there are uh, about four or five studies collected together, but okay. uh, they were all done in Tanzania, selecting okay. different regions, which I believe they were representative in, in terms of uh, sampling. So generally, they were done in different regions of Tanzania. Okay. Yes, uh, because I wanted to know where was this study done. For example, the study was started... Uh, the program was started in Uruvuma, mm -hmm. where these people were well trained and they were training people who were uh, already being in the farmers. So, and they were training nurses. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to know where was this study. And there was a close supervision in Uruvuma when mm -hmm. they were doing the pirate before doing this now to expand. Okay. Sorry, uh, you are being uh, you are stacking a little bit. Maybe you can repeat what you just said. In the last two sentences. And it's uh, but I'm sure God is good. <laughs> Everything will be okay. So I'm seeing uh. uh is saying that uh, it's okay with the uh, quality of services being provided, as we can see, yes. I think there was 5%. I, I didn't hear what yeah, five, reading five percent findings. 5% of the dispensers uh, gave information about the side effects of the, of the medication and, they, and they were dispensing. And there was 29%. 29% of the dispensers gave information on medications generally. Uh -huh. mm. Aha. Just 29% gave information on medication. Yes. So just let's, uh, let, let me talk about the uh, 5 cent and 29 Okay. Of almost not getting information from the, the adult dispensers. I, I think uh, when we go back to the training of adult dispensers, these are nurses uh, or assistant nurses. And when, they be, uh, when the program started, they were even training those people who were on the farm, uh, in the Dukalada Baridi. So they were being trained. So when you look on this research, this is not a, does not tell us like, a, this is uh, a, a something good if only 29% and the 71% of people who are visiting, they are not getting information in respect to the drug which are going to, which are going to use. So there we are 71% getting information and 29% See, there's a gap in the training. Okay. Enough information which can help 
okay, to give uh, maybe to the client patient the other shop. So more is needed to be done to improve. Maybe the city five because they say there are six weeks. Maybe rather than being trained only for six weeks, and then maybe we need more, maybe six months, maybe we need more than that. So that so I can't say that uh, there is improved uh -huh, quality of services based on those uh, findings. I can't agree with that. OK, thank you very much. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, we, because we there hear is you. up and down of the internet here. Yeah. yeah, we can we can bear with that. Thank you very much for a nice contribution. Uh, okay, coming back to you, Fadili. And I can't hear you well sometimes. Oh, okay. Fadili, coming back to you, uh, what are your insights regarding the actual quality of services being provided in the in the pharmacy, uh, not in the other shops? Because we have these findings from research, but based on your experience, what can you share about the quality of services? Oh, uh, thank you, Sonny. Based on the, the data that you just shared, one could be moved and tend to believe that uh, uh, the, the, the quality of the service is, uh, is to the level maybe that was expected. But again, as Dr. Betty has highlighted, the, the, the timing of the research, this uh, study could mean a lot. The selection of the research area could mean a lot, meaning that if this research came just after the establishment of the program, considering that there was funding, there was a, a, a lot of efforts put there just to make sure that I, the establishment and result, then it will mean that the quality of the services offered at that time in the initial stages would be up to the standard. Uh, coming to these timings, it depends now on how you look at it because the supervision is, has now been moved back to one institution and has also been decentralized but not only decentralized, given to the people who are already having other responsibilities. So you can't compare the supervision that was done in the initial stages to prove that the program is right and the supervision that is being done now. You cannot compare, I believe, the intensity, quality, and the parameters of the training that was, was being done at that point uh, during the establishment and now. So, Timing of the study that you referred to could mean a lot when it comes to saying whether now the existing systems and the quality of the are now comfortable with it. But my thinking, my observation is, uh, first of all, the quality will mean the capacity of the person who is, uh, is doing the service. The non- Hello, Fadili, are you, are you there? We, we lost you for a moment. I think uh, Fadili is has lost a connection. Dr. Betty, I see your hand. You, you, can, you yeah. can. Yeah. I wanted to add uh, about uh, the principle of good dispensing practice. Uh, the good, uh, the good uh, principle, uh, the principle of good dispensing practice is that you have to ensure the right medicine of the desired quality delivered correctly to the right patient with the right dose, strength, frequency, dosage, and quantity together with clear instruction. So you can see, uh, so one of the principal good dispensing practice to ensure that uh, the patient is getting clear instruction, both in written and verbal, with appropriate package, suitable for maintaining the quality and the efficacy of the medicine. So when you go to the principal good dispensing practice, 
uh -huh. you see that yes maybe they're getting right medicine uh the right but they gain instruction they don't get clear instruction from the dispensers so uh this you know if you don't give and this is one uh of the most important part of good dispensing practice you have to ensure the patient is understanding the instruction you have to ensure you are giving the correct unless otherwise there will be an issue uh, there might be overdose underdose there might okay. be an issue of drug resistance or poor treatment outcomes so when we look on the on those findings we can just end up saying no they don't meet uh -huh, the principle of good dispensing practice they will, those dispensers they don't meet the principle of good dispensing practice as it is supposed okay. to be okay yes thank you thank you very much for those insights um maybe yes. i bring some uh some uh Fadil is back so Fadil, you can continue with your contribution uh thank you uh sorry for that i don't know where i you ended, uh, I mean, where you uh, you, got, you lost me. But what I was trying to say is the timing will also mean a lot. But uh, what we're seeing now and the status that we have, we have to rethink on the the quality of, 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 of how the program is being run. And especially on the training part, on the staffing part, and on the supervision part. Okay, thank you. So we'll come shortly back to, to, to that issue. I, I, I would like to, to bring some comments from the chat box here. And Evans Mumez is saying, I thought enough effort should be directed to the existing infrastructure, the existing government facilities. By doing so, we shall be able to manage the quality of services with pharmaceutical services included. And Wilson Julius is saying, important thing here is to have qualified pharmaceutical personnel to provide services in Duka Dawa Muhim, because uh, you cannot study pharmaceutical services in 35 days and, and they do better in that area. Another contribution is from Pauline Biseko saying ADO was created for good cause and because the number of pharmaceutical personnel were low at that time. I suggest we keep the dispensing of medicine to pharmaceutical personnel and the number as the number is higher now than it was before. Uh, and uh, uh, lastly, from Evans again, now this brings the issue of employment of pharmaceutical personnel in a low level health facilities. This is possible through creating an attractive environment and it's indeed cross cutting. So thank you people for those contributions and you can also visit the chat box yourself to, to read more of the comments. And uh, so uh, we were discussing about the quality and before we move to another point, I would like to, 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 because we know all the challenge of antimicrobial resistance development across the, the globe. And of course, Tanzania is not an island. We, we also face the challenges. With respect to antimicrobial dispensing, uh, uh, the study done in 2015 by John Chakra again found that 34% of clients presenting with an acute respiratory infection symptoms in an adult shops were prescribed with an antibiotic. And 85% of the clients who requested an antibiotic were sold one. And no significant difference in dispensing antibiotic without prescription was noted between the ADO shops and the, the then Lucala Dawa Baridi. This is according to the study done by, by Professor Minzi and Vicente Manilizo in 2013. The same study by Professor Minzi and Vicente Manilizo uh, found that 35% of dispensed uh, of, of ADO shops dispensed in complete doses of antibiotics. So here we see almost uh, with regard to provision of information, provision of antibiotic without prescription, provision of incomplete doses of antibiotics uh, associated with these uh, shops from about uh, three different studies in three different years. Uh, 
Oh, and this uh, highlights about what Dr. Bet was, was contributing, I think, about the, uh, the, the challenges in the services, uh, the quality of services being offered in these uh, outlets. And that brings us to the, to the next point about, uh, about training of the program itself. Because now, uh, if, if the, the dispensers are, are delivering low quality services, Maybe the issue is on the training. Dr. Betty, can you highlight us on the training of adult dispensers in Tanzania? How is it conducted? Is Dr. Betty here? Okay, maybe Fadir, you can help on that. Uh, I was muted. Uh, okay, continue, please. Yes. The adult training in the beginning uh when we go back when it was established uh when you, you even when you read uh, on the documents on the adult story on the pc uh on the farmers council uh website you find like when the adult was established all the training was uh, done by selected trainers and the majority were from muhimbili the pharmaceutical the diploma uh college so majority of those who are involved were selected trainers. Later on, there were uh, this called uh, the giving different institution to train. Okay, so the, it was like decentralized from the farmers council, allowing different institution to train other. So I think that's where the problem now started because you don't know how different people they train this. You don't know how the tutors, uh, these tutors who are training, how they are training because they, these people, they are receiving money uh, as their cost for their training. And then they are training. If you are training people and then most majority of them, they are failing. I think you will know the consequences. Next time you will not have people coming to your, to your institution because they will say, uh -huh, when you go to that institution for training, What's going to happen? Uh, all of you, you will fail. They are very strict. They have to ensure because when you look on the, the uh, when they establish the ADO, they were training them for those six weeks, but there were exam every Saturday. There was exams, so at least the four exams, and then you had to pass those exams, 50%, and then you had to do an oral exam, you have to pass by 25 points. So I'm not sure when they decided to institutionalize taking this out from the farmers council, allowing other different institutions. Do this, uh, 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 this uh, what was uh, supposed to be followed? Are these other institutions following the same? Because there were standards set. So we are not sure if the standard which was set in the beginning by the farmers council, uh, not farmers council, the farmers board uh, and then TFDA and then TMDA because this is standard when the program started it started with the farmers board and then they let on TF, uh, TFDA and then TMDA and then I think in 2012 it was moved to the farmers council so I'm not sure if those standards which were set in the beginning if those other institutions they're still in following them that's why maybe Sometimes you find these people who are highly incompetent. Yes, the number of days are very few. Maybe they're being trained by incompetent tutors or the tutors, they are competent, but another problem comes. If you make these people fail, who will come? Because this is now a business, you are paying for it. But when there was selected tutors uh, and this program was funded, so these tutors, they had nothing to, to lose, even if, if you don't meet. I remember uh, once upon the time, people are saying we are failing when you don't meet those requirements, but I've not heard for a long time with these people again, they are failing uh -huh, if they don't meet those requirements. So what I can see that, I can say that after mm. is to, uh, deciding to move this program to different institutions, are they still meeting the required standard? Mm -hmm. as was set by the farmers board who is doing the monitoring and evaluation 
who is going to do the supervision ensuring that what is intended is true is being uh, trained to the trainee so maybe mm -hmm. those are the questions to ask ourselves who are supervising those institutions who ensure the prior set standard they are being met or not so we are not sure so those are questions which we have to ask ourselves if the standard why we have these people uh, whom we think they are incompetent, even though the uh, the number of training, the number of days of being trained, also they are not enough. So okay. thank you, Masota. Thank this you. Is what I can contribute thank, on you. That. thank you. Before before coming back to you, Fadila, I see the hand of of Pauline Biseko. Pauline, you, you you can contribute, please. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Yes, okay. Biseko. So to, to add up to what Dr. Bete has said, um, so the, the adult trainings are now institutionalized to, 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 to colleges which are offering pharmaceutical courses. So what is actually done is before you are being enrolled to undergo adult course, there is interview, there is, uh, they are conducting an interview to make sure that you have, you, have, you have the right qualification to undergo the other course. So they will check up for your, for your, for your um, other, medical, other medical courses certificate. So if you are a nurse, you will be required to bring your nurse certificate. If you are a, a clinical officer, you will be required to bring your um, uh, medical... Um, okay. Biseko, are you still there? We lost you. Okay, looks like uh, Pauline has lost his connection. Uh, Fadili, coming back to you, uh, as Dr. Betty has contributed very well about the issues regarding the aspect of training of adult dispensers. I was looking at the adult dispenser curriculum topics, and these were published in 2015 by Edmund Ruta. I believe they were correctly retrieved from the appropriate uh, uh, authorities. And the topics are highlighted as they should be trained about laws, regulations, and ethics, then good dispensing practices and the rational medicines used, and then common medical conditions in the community, and then reproductive health and HIV AIDS, then communication skills and counseling, and then child health, lastly, record keeping. And if I'm not mistaken, all of these are trained within uh, three months. So we have some issues reason by Dr. Betty about time of the training. And looking at these contents of the curriculum, uh, Fadili, do you think uh, it's adequate to prepare someone to work in, a, in an adult outlet. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, for sure. Okay, thank you. Um, to start with, uh, the time is very limited. And to me, if you ask, like uh, it has been put earlier, and that's why the program initially aimed for those who are already in service or have an idea of health. Uh, services and practices, meaning that it's an add-on uh, to give them the responsibility of handling the medicines. So the time with the context of what they are learning, uh, if we want really to, to say that these people have acquired a knowledge to be able to service in those, uh, in in those facilities, that is the add-on, no, uh, a month six weeks is not, uh, is not enough. Uh, of course, I also have a, a document in front of me, which uh, also uh, talks about the, the causes then that we are supposed to be given, provide basic dispenser training on the ADO uh, approved drugs, common indications, contraindications, doses, side effects, patient information, effective communication skills. 
Th these are things that you 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 will not at all meet, and especially best of the people that are now attending these uh, these courses mm. so so for me that's that's my my thinking and uh, that will be my contribution okay thank you very much for that uh, i see the hand of uh, farhan yusuf farhan welcome to give your contribution thank you so much moderator i hope you can hear me for sure Ah, yeah. So my name is Farhan Yusuf. I'm a pharmacist. I've been practicing in Tanzania for the last 10, 11 years, uh, mostly working in the space of health system strengthening and pharmaceutical supply chains in the NGO domain of things. So first of all, I think I would like to congratulate uh, the Pharmacy Forum for finally having a technical discussion about ADOS because I usually say that it's very unfortunate that most of our conversations about ADO usually happen on Twitter and they are very much driven by something went wrong somewhere and then people start discussing that. And so, you know, it, it becomes a very subjective discussion and I'm glad uh, for, you know, another element that was presented early on today that let's have a very objective discussion. So I'm, I'm quite pleased by that personally. Uh, while I think I'm, you know, quite happy that we are having a technical discussion, I think there are two elements that are missing in our discussion today. And I, you know, perhaps the, organization, the organizers try to have this, but I really think what would have helped more with the discussion today is having two more stakeholders in our discussion panel. Number one, someone from either Pharmacy Council or TMDA, because you know they are the regulators, they are the ones who are running the whole show. We have certain questions about training that we are discussing right now that would have been very easy to answer if someone from Pharmacy Council was present here. Because for example, even when it comes to the ADO dispensers curriculum, you know, we are referring to content from 2015, but I know for a fact that that curriculum was reviewed in 2020. So there's a new ADO dispensers curriculum. And I think those kinds of clarification would have been provided by pharmacy council had they been around in this discussion, number one. Number two, I also think, you know, an element that is missing is that we do not have someone who owns an ADO or dispenses an ADO on the panel. I often find it quite unfair that we have all these discussions about ADOs without really involving the ADOs in the discussion. So we, we are usually, I, I think we don't come to a conclusion because it ends up becoming an us versus them situation whereby it's pharmacists versus ADOs, whereas that's not how it's supposed to be. So I think what would have been really helpful was if we had someone who either owns an ADO or is dispensing at an ADO to also be part of this discussion. I mean, I do know that there are certain pharmacists, by the way, who own ADOs, right? Rather than owning community pharmacies, they own ADOs. So it would be nice to have that kind of representation over here as well, so that we could hear from their angle, you know, what their thought processes are, what are the challenges that they are facing, just again, to have a more objective and well-rounded discussion. Uh, I think, you know, hopefully we'll go more towards the way forward later, and, and I have some thoughts on that. But I think lastly, just something that I want to comment at this point is that, as we are thinking about the way forward, again, from a very technical and objective point of view, I think one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that there's the ideal scenario, you know, which uh, would have, you know, the best healthcare services available at all times to everyone, the whole universal health coverage, you know, uh, issue that we keep talking about. However, I, I would pledge everyone here in the discussion and in future discussions to be a bit more realistic, you know, keeping in mind that we have resource challenges, right? We have a lot of issues. I mean, we are having discussions around, you know, more hiring of pharmaceutical personnel, health facilities, like there, there are so many uh, challenges. So 
as we are thinking about solutions, let's be practical and realistic and talk about long-term solutions, which would be the ideal scenario that we are striving to get at. But in the short term right now, where we know for a fact that some of these things may not be possible immediately, how then do we improve the, the regulation? How then do we improve, you know, some of these other elements of supportive supervision, for example? I mean, you know, even when we talk about that, supportive supervision is not just an issue for adults. For anyone who's worked in the health sector, they know that even health facilities will complain to you that we don't get enough supervision. So it's, it's not a very, some of these issues are not isolated ADO issues, they are larger health system issues. And so, you know, solutions for those might be a bit more complicated. So let's be a bit practical in our discussions and focus on, you know, what can be done in the short term to improve some of these things. Thank you. Okay, many thanks for Han for, for a very nice contribution. Uh, we really appreciate. Uh, just on behalf of the organizers to, to respond to uh, about the composition of the panelists, it's true. Uh, we're having two panelists today. One is a representative of the Pharmaceutical Society of Tanzania, and the other one is an academician. Uh, our efforts to find a representative from the Farmers Council of Tanzania uh, were not successful. Uh, I'm sad to say that, uh, uh, regardless, a close, close follow up. Maybe it's because of some ongoing uh, political situations. So it was not uh, successful to get a representative from the Pharmacy Council of Tanzania as much as we, we would like to have that. Also, we try to get uh, someone who is uh, involved in the training of the ADO themselves, ADO dispensers, and uh, uh, th that was also not successful. But uh, if you are in this forum today and you own an ADO, you can happily contribute about your experience as well uh, without any hesitance. Uh, apart from that, we will keep trying to do other discussions about ADO in the future for sure. And in this discussion, we will uh, try to include more uh, people who we did not capture today, also to see other angles of this issue uh, so that we also uh, stay in time with having fewer uh, panelists at a time instead of having so many and, and, and they discuss so less. So thank you very much, Far Farhan. Uh, and uh, we were discussing about the issue of training. And uh, I, I think, uh, Fadili, do you have something to add on that? Thank you, uh, Nelson. Mm. I, I, thank, I thank Farhan for his... Uh, his open-minded contribution. And I would want to add on what he, he said on a different angle, uh, especially when it comes to human resource. It has always, always been a, a hideout for most of uh, saying that, uh, let's be realistic. It kinds of hide profession for a very long time. We, we have had uh, different cadres of uh, doctors uh, from the lowest possible, but after some times, most of them, uh, I mean, have been upgraded. And we agree, maybe uh, when the program was uh, started, we needed some people, just like a crash program. But now, as we speak, we have a lot of uh, institutions offering uh, higher levels of uh, pharmaceutical personnel that are lower than pharmacy, which who can be used in this uh, establishment of the new adults. What we are trying to say here is not closing the existing adults, but from now on, we need this program, yes, but we need to change the strategy into the human resource in the, 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 the adult. How do we do it? We don't think that using one month to train a person and give them mandate to hold medicine is feasible when we, when we are looking at the quality. Secondly, uh, even if one comes with a, with a suggestion that we need to use the other healthcare providers like the nurses and the doctors, yes, they may be ideal candidates, 
but you are strangling the profession in the fact that these people already have a certain know-how of another profession, which if this person doesn't know how to separate the, 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 the responsibilities, it gets into conflict of interest and ruins everything. And now what we are trying to, to make sure that we attain is to have a, a, a conflict of interest free ADO, but with personnel that have acquired the necessary information and they can handle medicine. And this is for a fact, I can refer to document again, which uh, was done at the initial stage of the program, which says after training and a person is already working in the ADO, then there needs to be a recertification uh, re uh, at an interval and the continuous profession development. So going back to what uh, Farhan has contributed, this is what we are saying. We are seeing a challenge when it comes to uh, supervision. I, I doubt, yes, I agree with Farhan, we needed to have TMBA or a farmer's council on board so that they can answer. Do they do recertification? Do they do a continuous profession development? Because things do change. You just don't complete six weeks of training and go there for indefinite time saving people in the ADO. That's not possible. But for those who are already under farmer's council as the farm tech, pharmaceutical assistant, gladly there is a regulation where they are supposed to acquire certain points through CPD to gain the, 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 the right to practice the next year. And this is going, I think, to start this year if uh, Farmers Council uh, is going to, to effect it. So I think we need to change the modality of who we give the authority into the adults. Okay, many thanks Fadil for that contribution. And uh, uh, we are, uh, going to, to come to the regulation aspect in a moment. And uh, maybe coming back to you, Dr. Betty, uh, uh, recently the Minister for, for Health and other issues uh, suspended the adult training for an unknown time. So do you think this is among the starting points of changing the, the way adult training is being conducted in Tanzania? Dr. Betty, are you there? Yes, I'm there. I'm there by myself. Uh, I, uh, I agree with uh, Fadir, what he was talking about. Like there was, when you look on the documents, there was uh, supposed to have the certification, training and retraining and continue uh -huh, education. So there was training, retraining. So I think maybe uh, suspending this training maybe will give us time to think uh, the, or to have new strategies, how to go about. So when someone suspends something, give time to think and rethink. So I think this is something good. We, we have time to think and rethink maybe how we can improve the training. So this might be a good chance for bodies okay thank you in and in, in few uh in future how we can undertake this training so that's what i'm thinking about sir. thank you very much uh we have a comment from Pauline in the chat box saying these institutions offering adult program have been registered by the pharmacy council and are monitored by it they are required to have adult tutors who are approved by the council. So before you are enrolled, you undergo extensive interview supervised by the farmer's council. They do special ex exercises weekly, which contributes to 40% of the final exam from the council, which contributes 60%. So thank you, Pauline, for, for that highlight on how the trainers of the adult are, are prepared. I believe it adds something to the to the discussion. Thank you. Uh, now, as we are going toward the end of our discussion, we have about uh, ten minutes, and 
uh, would like to highlight on the regulation and the oversight in, in, in a nutshell, uh, uh, two different studies found that the regulation and the enforcement or supervision of ADO uh, is inadequate in Tanzania. One study was conducted in 2015 and another one was conducted in 2018. So uh, with, res with, with respect to uh, regulation and oversight of ADOs, what is your perspective, uh, Fadili? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Nelson. Um, I think my, my, my observation and uh, comment will, will be just like the one that I shared earlier. And I tend to, to do it uh, with, with caution, especially considering what uh, Pauline has just uh, uh, shared and Farhan's uh, view on, on this, we agree, yes. Uh, I think maybe this uh, would be a good discussion if uh, Farmers Council was going to be here. Uh, but it is uh, for a fact that the regulation starts with who trains. And to me, I, I tend to feel that the believe that uh, your pharmacist, because a pharmaceutical technician, maybe you 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 just can train, you you just can train people. But I I want to believe that for this particular kind of programs, especially with the with this short time that is used to train people, then the trainer also. The, the people answer so that we know for sure that these people have content. These people take time to re remind themselves of the dynamics so that whatever they offer to those people going into the adult shops, knowing that they offer to them in a very it's to be a concrete information easy to assimilate. So for me, I think regulation starts with the trainers. Second, regulation in terms of uh, monitoring, that is what I cannot go into because maybe I've not been into Farmers Council, not knowing how regularly they visit the colleges, but the challenge will be if they announce a cause, for example, and you, you receive a hundred people in a class and you want to train them in a month and you have only one trainer, that will not be a training, it will be a preaching. And in preaching, you, you, you are sure by the time you finish the sermon, the, whatever remains in the head is very minimum. So people might struggle passing the exams, but what they retain after the exam may not be sufficient to serve into the adult shops. So for me, trainers, selection of the trainees, but also uh, not mixing the cadre, because that will still bring issues when it comes to practice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Betty on your side, welcome. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, Fadila's uh, contribution is very really good. That uh, first of all, we need uh, who is doing the monitoring evaluation for these institution who are training. Yes, uh, they say it's farmers can say, but just know all those institutions for the lower cadre, they don't belong to the farmers can say, they belong to NACTE. So whatever they are doing, I think the farmers can say they need to know who is going to train. Maybe they could have the mechanism as it used to be in the previous, that uh, before the training, you have to send them or more teachers we are supposed to be involved. And at least one person, maybe from the farmers' council, to be there during the training to ensure that uh, 
uh, they have select, uh, those tutors who are involved in the training are the one uh, whom their name were sent to the farmers council indicating maybe their qualifications okay and they train those people even if again um, uh, the number of days is still very few to train someone and end up being a dispenser so they need to improve on monitoring and evaluation on that part of training especially the farmers cancer thank so that's you. what i can say thank you thank you very much uh, i agree with both of you panelists that uh, regulation and oversight is a challenge similar to the previous studies and uh, unfortunately this involves a lot of funding to be, or, or to be able to to to, to operationalize and uh, you know, one scholar actually said the ADO had a lot of funding during its establishment, but when it was handed over to the Tanzanian government, there appeared to be issues with some adequate funding to enable it to operationalize as it was ideally created to. So maybe uh, the challenges regarding funding are going to be resolved, then we can have better and better uh, oversight and the regulation of the adult programs. So now let's spend the last few minutes to, to highlight uh, on the uh, issues regarding way forward. How do we move from here now that we found ourselves here as a profession and as a country in terms of uh, uh, adult and the services they provide? Ultimately, we want to have good quality medical uh, uh, medicine service provision to the society or to the community. Uh, What's your take, Fadili? Sorry, can you come again? I think I missed the, the uh, context. The question is uh, on way forward from now. How, how do we proceed from this point? If you want to add, I know you have given some insight on way forward when you were contributing previously, but if you have anything specific, please welcome. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I think the, the cloud that is surrounding the adult discussion it feels like it's a, it's a war or there is a, a conflict and uh, that maybe the pharmacists are, uh, are jealous when it comes to maybe those who are providing adult training or the, the adult service providers. No, basically, frankly speaking, we like adults. Adults being accredited drug dispensing outlet. We like the idea that adults needs to be outside towns in rural areas and hard to reach areas. We don't want to see an adult in towns where pharmacies are already established because this makes, uh, first of all, makes people and the community not being able to separate the farmers and the adult at the end of the day they feel they don't feel the proper service that they can get at the farmers. Secondly, I want uh, us uh, all to agree for the fact that we cannot continue indefinitely training people to handle medicine for just a month. It has been done that way for medical clinicians, but they phased it out. And now we are saying, doctors are many, doctors are going up to the level of the dispenser. What they did is the authorities responsible for clinicians made an effort to make sure that there is a plan to build the capacity and have the, I mean, the qualified staff they want. Yes, they started with the crash program, but the crash program had to have an end. So, Adult training of a month cannot go indefinitely, but adults can be there in rural areas. And those who are, were, were started in town in 2015, maybe, or maybe in Periaban during the 2000, and, 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 and I mean, during the initial stages, and find themselves now surrounded by pharmacies, they need either to upgrade or to close so that the pharmacies can offer the services because pharmacies are there. Why have a pharmacy and an adult? And this is the regulation that is there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the pharmacy council books. And this is what we are saying. If it is there, why not being implemented? So we, the next phase is to make sure that we implement all the regulations that we have, even including 
uh, the regulations that wants pharmacies to offer good services. Uh, on top of that, my way, my other suggestion on the way forward is to stop using other, other, other professionals. In the short term, pharmacy training. And this I mean, we stop the adult training one month. We thank the minister has stopped for us to rethink. And when we come back, we come back with, to address what uh, Farhan's concern is, use a one month uh, a forum, I mean, one year forum training so that we can quickly have them. But in this one year, still, let's not allow uh, other medical fields to use the one month, one year. The reason is if you give them chance to use the shortest possible time, they will still use it, go and do misconducts. Because if they were really interested in the pharmaceutical services to, to, to begin with, you can't lie to me that they didn't know that there is pharmacy. You can't. So I will encourage those who are medical personnel, those who are nurses, they start being accepted only from the diploma up. So that when they complete, they know they've acquired all the ethics of the pharmacy profession. But for those that we want to go into adult, they do one year and we don't accept other medical personnel because it will mess us up. We'll still sit, we'll still come back again into this discussion, trying to, 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 to take them out. Because there's no way, uh, for example, a pharmacist can go train one month and start doing clinical services as they are being done by maybe clinical officers. It is not possible. So why are we on the umbrella or the cloud of shortages, the, the country is big? Why the country is not big when it comes to medical personnel? Let the, the, the authorities, especially the Farmers Council, the Ministry, both the Education and the Ministry for Health, work on the strategy that will help of the services. Okay, thank you very much Fadili for a very nice conclusion and the concluding remarks in general about the way forward with respect to the ADO uh, programs operation in Tanzania. Now I turn to you Dr. Betty in one or two minutes if you, you want to give your contribution about um, uh, way forward, please. I, I, I think the time is almost over. Yes. I look on my timing here. I think uh, one of the major challenges in the adult shop is the unavailability of trained or qualified trained staff. But when you look on the number of adult who have been trained and the number of adult which are available, you see there is a mismatch. Between the trained, uh, there is 25,000 or almost being trained and 14,000 adult shop. So there's a mismatch. So one of the way forward to ensure we have trained or qualified at least those who need to be retrained and to be retrained again, these adult qualified, at least we need uh, of matching employee and employer. We need to find out where are these people who have been trained, where are they? Uh, and so I think we have almost 17,000 dispensers who have been trained, but where are they? What are they doing? So I think we can solve this problem of unqualified people by ensuring there is a way we can match employee and employers. Uh, someone here can make a database to ensure that when these people who are opening, they are using maybe unqualified people because they can't get an access to qualified personnel who maybe they could have used in their. So I find Are you want to have a qualified personnel, I can get an access because head hunting also is an issue. We have qualified people, because we can get access. Another way forward is to ensure like, oh, they are aware on the process 
Yeah, the majority of people or uh, owners who are opening, maybe they are not aware on the process that they need to do this and do this. So if there was a cross supervision and there was something I used to call farmers, uh, pharmacy jammy, like if I see an adult being opened in uh, my area, I can report it to the farmers and say, hey, I can see there is a new, uh, a new shop here uh -huh. for selling drug, but I'm not sure if this new shop has got uh, any uh, uh, certificate or license or whatever, if it has been approved. So this could have helped to reduce the mushrooming of uh, other shop. Uh, and another way forward is retraining and retraining those who have received the adult, because now we can't uh, remove or approve uh, the certificate which they had already. So we have to retrain and retrain or have continued education to ensure that they receive. And another issue which has been, uh, is about the long waiting time before approval. Maybe they need to find a way out, especially for those who want to open the other shop. They, first, they have to match them with the, those dispensers. Number two, to shorten the waiting time for approval. If someone is waiting for one year, what do we have to do? They have to open it. So we need to shorten the waiting time, especially the regulatory board to find the way out. Uh, me, I, I usually don't believe on crossing things that someone has opened and then you cross. I, I feel like this is a policeman business. What I do believe is like to show people the way out. You have opened this, show them the procedures. If they can't meet the required, uh -huh, the required uh, standard, and now you can come back and say, uh -huh, we have shown you the way. We have told you this is, you are not supposed to have an other shop here because of this and this, but we can allow you to open somewhere where it is allowed. So you show them the way. Rather than coming there and crossing it like police, I don't believe on that. I do believe on showing people the way out of those problems. When you go and cross, it's like police, so uh, police business. So we need as professionals to take this in a professional way, showing those people who have got hard all that. So there is a way out. Okay, we have messed up already, but there is a way out in a very professional way, ensuring that people they continue having medication of good quality and efficacious there, and they get good pharmaceutical services uh, in a right way, but also those people who had their adult wherever, uh, even Dukabubu, they know all the standard requirements and they meet all the requirements. So we can start by, if someone here, I can see the young, uh, a uh, young man here uh, just graduated from the farmers. They can take this as a challenge to them to ensure that maybe mm -hmm. they have a website or they have a link where they can meet employee and employer and help us to reduce having these unqualified, uh -huh, unqualified mm -hmm. people in the other shop. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Betty, Thank you, Masota. For, for, for nice uh, uh, concluding remarks from your side as well. Just to to yeah. to, to, to highlight something you you spoke about uh, a mismatch between trained agro dispensers and the outlets which are there. For you as an academician, uh, maybe it's now a challenge to look where are they going, because actually the study by Professor Minzi and the Vincent Manuizu in 2013 found that 40 percent of agro dispensers stopped working at these shops and then untrained staff were employed in these shops. So it is not so far from now, 2013, but I believe this thing is still happening. So uh, what are the factors which are bringing about this high attrition rate or among the other dispensers? Maybe this is a research question you can continue to explore, Dr. Bet and other academicians in here. And uh, uh, from my side, I would say thank you very much, all of you, for uh, attending the today's discussion on the oper operations of ADO in Tanzania, the challenges, opportunity, and the way forward. We believe that ADO has a lot of good uh, attributes in itself, especially when it comes to the availability and access of medicines to the suburbs in the rural Tanzania. And uh, the only challenges are in the actual 
quality of services which are, which are being produced, uh, provided inside these outlets. And I believe that we have tried to highlight them across the today's discussion, and they are quite much more. And uh, uh, we have done our part for today, and we'll keep doing so, trying to invite other uh, sides of ADO in the forthcoming discussions. Uh, ADO has been uh, adopted also in Liberia and Uganda, uh, apart from Tanzania, and many other countries are reported to have visited Tanzania to, to learn about ADO. Among them, I have Ethiopia, South Sudan, Bangladesh, Nigeria, DR Congo, Burundi, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Zambia, and Madagascar. So I think it's a concept which is gaining more popularity only that some aspects are needed to be uh, dealt more closely, so as we can assure that the final uh, service provided to the uh, community are uh, of optimal quality. With that, I would like to thank you, uh, Fadili and Dr. Maganda, for attending the today's uh, symposium as a um, panelist. Thank you very much for your very, very, very much uh, useful, good, quality insights, and I believe all the attendants have gained a lot from the today's discussion. This discussion is going to be on our YouTube channel in a matter of two or three days, and you can access it again to re-listen, share to your friends and colleagues, and I believe you can continue to learn from very good insights which have been shared in the today's discussion, also for those who did not make it to attend. Uh, you can also follow us on our YouTube channel, subscribe, also follow us on our Instagram and Facebook pages so that you can uh, get information about our forthcoming symposia on time. I also like to thank our sponsors. Farmers Forum East Africa is officially sponsored by the Action Medior and the Christian Social Services uh, Council of Tanzania. And with that, I would like to say goodbye. See you again next month. Thank you.